think I got it on, James. Thank you, Matt. Amen, amen. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited that I get to do this, guys. This is, this is very fun. Um, super excited. Welcome, welcome. If you've been here a hundred times, welcome. We're glad that you're here. If this is your first time visiting, welcome. I know you've probably been bombarded by 15 people you don't know, giving you hugs and stuff like that. That's what we do here at The Rock. That's how we get down. And if you're just making your seasonal rounds, you figure you need to slip in in the holidays, hey, you got to do what you got to do. That's cool, too. No, I'm just kidding. So, um, man, when I was, um, Steve asked me to do this, I was super excited, and I was super nervous. But the thing is, um, I just kept thinking, man, you guys are such a great people to just be in front of. You guys really give me so much strength, um, um, and I'm just excited. So I'm not going to take up too much of y'all's time today, but I'm getting to it, and uh, we're going to have some fun, right? But all of y'all know this year is coming to an end. If you don't know, maybe the shopping, and you notice your bills done went up a little bit, and, you know, wifey swiping, she's going crazy. <laughs> Y'all know how it goes, getting a, little, getting a little intense. That's all right. The year, year is closing out, but I want to focus on this morning. One of the things I want to focus on is ending strong. So finishing 2021 strong. So I know it's almost over, but there's still hope. And so there's, it's a word of hope today that I hope you guys are ready to receive, and um, so one thing my dad used to always say, he said, finish strong. Yeah. Two things, finish strong and don't have to do nothing. Amen. So <laughs> me growing up, though, <laughs> just real quick, me growing up, I was kind of the, not the half doer, yeah. but, <laughs> hey, sir, I got the mic, Pop. I got the mic. So it's all factual, I'm saying. I wasn't the half doer, but, for example, okay, for example, cleaning wasn't my problem as a kid. <laughs> listen, listen, <laughs> let me get there. Let me get there. Let me develop this thought for y'all so y'all can see. Cleaning wasn't the problem. It really was keeping the house clean. You see what I'm saying? That, that was my thing, right? Keeping the house clean. So me and my sister are really, both really bad at that. Shout out to Cindy. She was horrible. Uh, Dakari knows because Dakari was there. He remembers. We used to have this drill we used to do, uh, especially in the summer. We used to have this drill we used to do. So we would call up. We thought we were slick. So. My dad didn't play about cleaning the house. You see this jolly fellow right here over here? Like, you can confuse him with black Santa Claus. He had an edge back in the day, right? He had an edge, so he ain't play that. So house had to be cleaned at certain times. So my dad's, in his mind, four, three and a half hours, that was ample time to clean the house. That's what he expected, right? But us being lazy and having a lot of people over during the summer, we always procrastinated. So what we do, me and my sister thought we were so smart, what we do, we call up to my mom's job, right? So we call up, poor Miss Karen, we call up to her job and say, hey, can I speak to, to Mara Phillips, please? We weren't really trying to check in on mom, but we're trying to make sure she didn't leave work, right? <laughs> so we're trying to make sure she didn't leave work because we know, okay, see, the, the, the grace in that was they, we only had kind of one vehicle, so we knew they kind of had to leave at the same time. So if we got one of them, they were still there, we were still probably good, right? <laughs> but one day it didn't work out like that. <laughs> one day it didn't work out like that. Me and Sydney, you know, we parlaying. That's one word my dad hates. He hates parlaying. He didn't like to see you relaxing on the couch, <laughs> doing something. He thought, hey, you relaxing on the couch, you can be pulling some weeds out. We better. Aren't we? <laughs> so, he, you know, he, he didn't really like that too much. So that was his thing. So we, this particular day, we didn't have anybody over, I don't think. And um, we just heard the, the key in the door just turn. Me and my sister on the couch, we both woke up out of REM sleep. Boom. <laughs> we woke up out of REM sleep. I beelined it to the kitchen because the way the door is, so you can kind of almost see the, the kitchen from the house. So you had to run. You had to get kind of in that corner before you caught the tail in, cut the water on, act like I was doing dishes. And, uh, but unfortunately, my dad finished strong that day because he, he tore us up. So... Yeah, we, we didn't get around on them on that one, but yeah, so finish strong like, like Archie Phillips Jr. would do. So <laughs> I thought y'all would enjoy that. So, so really, today I want to focus on two things. I want you guys to repeat this after me. I want you to say Christ, Christ was, hope was hope realized, realized in, the flesh. in the flesh. And the second thing we're going to talk about is, repeat this, how, how to hope past, hope past your crowd. 
So before I get into the verses, uh, I just want to read a verse real quick. If, if um, <clears throat> you've been saved for longer than two weeks, you probably heard this verse two times. And um, it's Romans 12, 2, that says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. It's about his will, right? Yeah. Testing him. And isn't it awesome we have a God that says, you can test me? Yeah. Go ahead and test me. Give me a try. Try me out. And, um, but I really want you guys to focus on the mind, that mind changing. Because that's where, that's where lives start changing. That's where behavior, that's where faith starts to get increased when the mind changes. That's the important part. So I want you guys, if you will, turn with me to Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. If you got your Bibles or you got your iPhone, don't pull out an Android like my dad. I know I almost started him a GoFundMe, y'all. I almost did it, but I ain't going to do it to him. I ain't going to do it to him. It was bad. James, let me know. Yep, hallelujah. All right, so let me give you some context. Uh, give you some context to this one. So Christ, at this part, um, he just got some bad news. He just got some bad news. John the Baptist just got taken out. Um, this is his cousin. And he also was murdered. So <clears throat> Christ is actually on his way to kind of find himself, kind of by his lonesome, kind of just get, you know, just his homie just died. His friend just died. Somebody he loved, somebody he knew, you know, um, just was, was murdered. So he's kind of on his way to do something. But he is found out, right? He's found out. The people see him, and they flock to him. So I'm going to read this real quick, and then we're going to circle back to some stuff. So when Jesus got the news, he slipped away by boat to an out-of-the-way place by himself. But unsuccessfully, someone saw him, and the word got around. So he got found out. Sometimes your good stuff finds you out, right? It's not always bad stuff. <laughs> but he got found out. Soon a lot of people from the nearby villages walked around the lake to where he was. So... Just real quick, you got to be a bad boy for somebody to walk around a lake to go see you. Because sometimes I got to go pick up trash out by the retention pond, and I got to walk around that. <laughs> and it is a trek. Okay? So they saw him around a lake, and they said, oh, man, that's, that's a bad boy. We got to go see him. So when they saw them coming, he was overcome with pity, and he healed their sick. Toward evening, the disciples approached him. We are out in the country, and it's getting late. Dismiss the people so that they can go to the villages and get some supper. Once you pay attention to Christ's response. But Jesus said, there is no need to dismiss them. You be the one that gives them supper. All we have are five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus, they said. Jesus said, bring them here. Then he had the people sit on the grass. He took the five loaves and two fish, lifted his face to heaven in prayer. Blessed it, broke it, and gave the bread to the disciples. The disciples then gave the food to the congregation. They all ate their fill. They gathered 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 that day were fed. One thing I really love about Christ, like I said in the beginning, he's, he was hope realized in the flesh. And let me show you how he was hope realized in the flesh because this is what Christ said. Because he saw that the disciples kind of got caught up in what they were doing more than who they were there with. So I want to read something to you real quick that I wrote down. It says, provision in the kingdom is evidence, but it's not the most important evidence. Our response to the provider is the most important evidence you can ever dis display or put on display. See, Christ recognized that in that moment, it wasn't just about feeding the people. Christ, Christ came, he was healing the blind, all the miracles were done. The disciples came up. Simon's probably like, hey, you over here healing people? We don't know how to do all that yet, but, you know, we was holding it down. You know, we was doing our thing, you know. We got 5,000 people out here. We kind of funnel them to you. It's getting dark. Hey, it's time to go home. It's time to ring it up because they got to eat. We ain't really got much, right? We don't have much at all. But what's Christ's response? He said, no, you feed them. And what hope does, because Christ saw hope in every situation, it wasn't a switch he had to hit. Because he saw hope in every situation, he didn't see lack. He saw provision. So that same two fish that the disciples looked at and the people looked at and the five loaves of bread that those people looked at and said, oh, man, oop, time to hack, you know, time to pack it up, time to go, time to get out of here. He saw as an opportunity. Opportunity for what? 
Romans 12, too, opportunity for someone's mind to be changed. What happens when you, you're in a situation where you see, oh, the miracle done happened already. The blind man saw, but Christ understood that just because he can heal a man's vision didn't mean he can make him see. He realized just because he, he, he healed his ear didn't mean he can make him hear. But how a man is changed is witnessing another man's evidence. That's the most important witness. And Christ understood that. That's why he always saw hope. That's why hope was so important. And hope became realized. That's, it's a difference. I didn't just say Christ was hope in the flesh. But Christ was hope realized in the flesh because he walked every step. Every time he stepped, he walked with hope. And that was a difference. So he was able to see a situation and these people thought, oh, it's time to go. But he said, man, we didn't even start yet. What do you mean we ain't start yet? This, this got 5,000 people out here, Christ. Do you not see all these people we got? You only like healed like 300 of them. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's time to go. Like, my wife at the crib, like, I wasn't even sure I was coming out here with you, to be honest. You know, Christ could have said, I was in mourning. I was on my way to, to grieve, to grieve a, a man of God, but he wasn't too busy on where he was going and caught up in where he was going to miss the moment. And I need y'all to get that for, for the next place we're going. Amen. And the last thing that he, he, he recognized about the people is, you know, I said uh, they walked around a lake, which was a big deal. But the disciples probably were fooling themselves, and they thought those people were just going to leave. They didn't come just for that miracle. They came to be fed. They came to sit at a table. So how are you preparing your table? Because somebody is coming. Somebody is coming from the other side of the lake. Somebody is coming ready to be filled. So how are you preparing your table? So. Vanessa said something very apropos last week. Uh, I want to make sure I say this right. Forgive me, Vanessa, if I don't. But she said, imitate his faith. She was referencing Steve. But I want you to imitate in these two stories the faith of Christ. I want you to imitate the next person's faith. So imitate that faith. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what we were put here to do. I'm imitating your faith. That's the only reason why I can be up here, because I've imitated the faith of those in this place today. Amen. So jump with me to Luke 8, verse 43 through 48. Again, this is another familiar story. A little background on this one is, it's kind of funny because Christ, I'm not going to read uh, the part where it happens, but Christ has actually stopped. Um, they're going somewhere, and a man comes and says, hey, I have a daughter. She is, um, she's not well. She's only 12 years old. And uh, she's dying. So now Christ is on his way. He's going to, going to heal, heal this little girl. Again, he's doing something. He already got something in the agenda. You know, he already got something in the, you know, the, the, his notes for that week. Okay, I got to go here. And at this point, Christ is like a rock star. You know what I'm saying? So people know. They're they hearing about him. So they, they know when he's coming. So there's, imagine all these people are gathering. Also, come, Christ, come heal this. Christ, come see about this person. Christ, boom, boom, boom. So he's already gone. So he's busy. He's as busy as you. As busy as you can be. So, in the verse, you want to throw the verse up there, James? So, <clears throat> and I love how this, this verse starts. It's probably the most important line in here. So I want y'all to repeat this. So I want you to say, in the crowd that day. In the crowd that day. I want you to say it one more time. Say, in the crowd that day. In the crowd that day. There was a woman. You don't have to repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> I did do the same hand gesture, so you know what I'm saying? But I see how y'all got there, but we're going to keep moving. So you don't have to repeat this part, so I'll read it again. So in the crowd that day, there was a woman who for 12 years had been afflicted with hemorrhages. She had spent every penny she had on the doctors, but no one had been able to help her. She slipped in from behind and touched the edge of Jesus' robe. At that very moment, her hemorrhages stopped. Jesus said, who touched me? When no one stepped forward, Peter said, but master, we got crowds of people on our hands. Dozens have touched you. That same thing. Can you not see Christ? Like, clearly something wrong with you, because obviously that was a dumb question to ask, right? <laughs> you know, the disciples were men. You know, they, they, we all probably would have been thinking that same thing. Jesus insisted, someone touched me. I felt the power discharging from me. 
When the woman realized that she could not remain hidden, she knelt trembling before him in the front of the people. She blurted out her story, why she touched him, and how at that same moment she was healed. Jesus said, daughter, you took a risk trusting me, and now you're healed and whole. Live well, live blessed. Somebody say live well, live blessed. I want to go back to this first line when can you go back to the first, the first uh, part of the verse? So in the crowd that day, if, if we can just unpack that for a moment. It says in the crowd that day there was a woman, but she might have showed up to that physical crowd that day and saw that crowd around her. But I guarantee you, if you're dealing with something for 12 years, something's happening, I don't know, don't tell me. <laughs> but if you're dealing for something for that long, you already got a crowd around you. It might not look like physical people, that you got to navigate. But what do y'all think her, if she's dealing with this for 12 years, what do you think her crowd was? Just somebody shout something out. Her mind. Somebody else. Hopelessness. Despair. What else could a crowd have been? Pain in her body. If your blood is messed up, everything is jacked up, Jack. You, you in some trouble. Some, something else. What, what else could have been her? She's tired. Weary. Somebody else. Health, fear, all these things. This is a crowd that she's already been, been, been away. She's broken. She's broke. She spent all her money. So not only is she, her body is not well, she has no monetary staying power because probably the money she's investing, she's wasting because can't nobody do nothing. Can't nobody help her out, right? So that's the crowd she's dealing with. But hope. Hope has something different for her. And she's an amazing example of how to hope past your crowd. Mm. And this one I want you guys to know about hope. You take this one older lady, I'm assuming. Body's not well. She sees this massive crowd. Massive crowd. Now, just because you hope and you have faith, and even if you start activating that hope, that doesn't take away that atom in you that says, hey, if I get in this crowd with these people moving around like this, I might not get out. You know, our faith doesn't take away that, that ability to be human, but it's that ability to, human, to be human that makes our evidence that much more powerful. Because Christ doesn't go, he doesn't just say, hey, you're healed, so go ahead, get out of here. He, been heal- he always healing people. But what was the difference in this lady? She had evidence. She had evidence, and it wasn't just enough for her to be healed and move on, but Christ wanted her to not only be there, but to speak, to speak. And when she locked eyes with hope, hope is kind of like a siren. So when you kind of start hearing, you kind of hear hope usually a little, kind of more before you see her. But once you see her, now it starts getting louder. So the closer you start moving, so when you put that foot in front of the other, when hope becomes realized with each step, now, now hope becomes louder. Now it's like, okay, now the crowd starts to, okay, I can feel the crowd, but it's not the most important thing. It's not the most important thing. So I want to challenge you all today. What are those things that your crowd has been hindering you from doing this year? Because most people say, okay, 2021 is almost over, so I'm going to coast through. You can rest, but you still can get stuff done. And I'm here today to encourage you, hope past your crowd. Your crowd might have been the realest thing to you all of 2021. But guess what? It's not over. This year's not over. You still can leave the right way. You still can do those things that were in your heart at the beginning of the year. You can get them done today. You can get those things done. You do not have to wait until next year. Get done this year what it's supposed to get done. And... That is all I have for y'all today. And um, I love you. I bless you and I honor you. And, um, <laughs> and I just want to, I just want to, I know y'all love when we speak because we quick. <laughs> but I want to encourage you. I encourage you. Get it done. Be doers. Don't stop. Don't settle. I don't care what your crowd is. I don't care if your crowd is depression, anxiety. Failure, a a, a lack of, two hands, boy. 
tiredness, sickness in your body. I don't care if your crowd is your neighbor. I don't care if your crowd is your husband or, or, or your wife telling you no. Or the people you, you, you around all the time and say, oh, you can't, you can't do that. You, I, I don't believe in you. Hope is singing a different song. And hope is realized when sons and daughters of the one and only true living God step into their place. And I just want to read that last thing about provision one more time. And um, I'm going to read that one more, one more other thing. Now people be speaking, they, you think it's over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read this one more time. Provision in the kingdom is evidence, yeah. but it is not the most important evidence. Yeah. Our response to the provider is the most yeah. important evidence you can display. Yeah. And the last thing, hope brings clarity, effectiveness, and it is a revealer of your heart. And sometimes that's a great thing. Sometimes it's not such a great thing. But when your heart is revealed, take ownership. When it's revealed, if you don't like what it is, say, Father, come invade my heart. Come change my mind. Put me around people who have what I need, like Matt said. Put me in a place that's uncomfortable, that's going to require me to have to change, that's going to require me to have to look different than I've looked these whole 12 years. Because when you hear hope, when you hear your shoe is, is moving through, yeah. what are you going to do? What are you going to do with this year? The time is now. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. I love y'all. Y'all go be blessed. Thank you for coming. Be safe and uh, enjoy your families. Merry Christmas.